All right. Hey guys, welcome back to our continuing coverage of Ace Comic Con. We are here with who I think is the hardest working man at this entire con. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> star of the silver screen, uh, TV and more, Mr. Josh Herdman. Man, Woo-hoo! how's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Happy to be here. Tell me what it's like, because we have been watching, because we, we're like booth neighbors. You're, you're like four <laughs> booths down from us, and you have had a line in front of us. I just want to say thank you yeah, for providing yeah. such an audience for our show <laughs> yeah, all weekend much. long, because all weekend, <laughs> there's just been a line coming from your booth right in front of our booth <laughs> yeah. all weekend long. So big thank you. What's it like? Did you expect this kind of a turnout? No, uh, I didn't, actually. I yeah? Didn't. Yeah, because uh, I knew it could happen. <laughs> you know, but um, sometimes with the bigger ones, um, you either well you either do really really well, or, or sometimes you actually don't do very well at all. Yeah, um, you kind of get swamped, yeah. sort of lost, um, lost by all the big stars, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were the first panel of the day. You are the, the whole con. Like you kicked off the whole thing over there on the on the creator stage. Mm. We did a few creator stage panels this weekend. None had an audience nearly the size mm. of yours. I mean, how was that first? How was that first panel? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, we had, we had to cut off the Q and A's. We had so many people with their hands <laughs> yeah. hands raised up in the air. Guys, if you do have any questions for Josh Herdman, uh, we can do some at the end. Uh, any Harry Potter fans out there? So. We want to talk a little bit about your experience working in the Harry Potter universe. Yeah. I mean, what was it like? Uh, obviously, you acted. You, you've been acting since you were a, a child, even before Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, what was it like, kind of starting out in that universe and growing up with these characters until full adulthood? I mean, what few actors get a chance to be a part of a universe that that, that lives that long? And and I don't know. What was, what's it like? It was incredible experience, man. Like it was just. It really was like it sounds corny saying, but it was magical. <laughs> oh my god, you went there. That's the perfect hell. word. Right no, it was. It was. Um, but no, it, it was special, man. Um, and I think, like I said at the Q and A the other day, it was at the time it didn't quite. We didn't. I know because you're a child and it, it doesn't quite register. Right. Um, and you kind of get like conditioned to it in a way. And uh, well, I'm not going to say you take it for granted, but it just it just becomes normal. Yeah. You know, right. Being right. in that. Being in that. Second nature. Yeah, yeah, being in that world, and um, and now when I think about it, it's almost surreal. It's like, yeah. Kind of, kind <laughs> You're like, wait, did that really happen? Was that the yeah. same yeah. lifetime? <laughs> um, so yeah, nice. No, yeah, all in all, it's just a fantastic uh, experience, and it, it's you know, awesome to be a part of um, something which like meant so much to so many people. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people grew up right alongside you with those movies and everything, like. That's the crazy thing about the Harry Potter franchise is that people got into it at the age the actors were getting into it. So yes. just like you said, yeah. I mean, people grew I am up one of those it. people. Yeah. Tyra is one of your biggest fans right oh, here. Oh, yes, totally. Um, no, I definitely was one of those little kids. I think I picked up Sorcerer's Stone when I was in like third grade. I had to be like eight or nine years old. And I mean, gosh, I think I finished the first four in like a week, like a week and a half. And then I remember Same. the yeah, the movies were literally coming out as like the same age as I was and then yeah it's awesome yeah I did I read the first three in I think about a week yeah, yeah. it's so easy to read it's like you can't yeah. put it down like exactly. oh, just wanted more but you know I guess all good things come to an end <laughs> I know right <laughs> not in the book not franchise apparently. they're gonna keep on going oh, for a little right. while I know. so I mean before you landed the gig were you a fan of the series at all had you read them at all or did you start powering down as soon as you as soon as you got them no my my first when I first heard about Harry Potter was my my best friend he was an avid reader, um, and he was into them. And he was like, "Ah, oh, uh, you need to read these books." I was like, "What is it?" He said, it's "Called Harry Potter. It's about a boy wizard." Right. I was like, "Yeah." I mean, I'm Think not, about I'm it. I'm not really a fan of the, the fantasy genre. Right. No, I never really have been. Like sci-fi, you know, I don't like them kind of movies that much. Yeah. Um, he's like, "You got to read them." I was like, "Yeah, that's not my cup of tea, man." And I think it was like a year or two later, I got the audition uh, for Dudley. I wrote, I originally auditioned for Dudley oh and I had maybe five, four or five auditions, I can't remember, for Dudley wow. and screen tests and stuff. And uh, uh, I went to the first audition having not read the books and then when I got the recall, that's when I thought it'd be a good idea to read the books, you know, <laughs> do a bit of little homework. Research. Yeah. 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 <laughs> homework. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I read the first three in the space of a week. Uh, right. It was like a week between me doing the first audition and being told, I got, uh, no, from being told I got the recall 
after doing the recalls about a week, and I read the first three. That's wow. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to you about some of the people you shared the screen with uh, while you were in the Harry Potter franchise, especially uh, Mr. Alan Rickman. I mean, gone too soon, obviously, but um, any, any stories you could maybe share with us about uh, time spent with Mr. Rickman on, on the set? Uh, not really many stories. I mean, there's, there's, the stories I heard, there's actually one that I heard about, which I... Which I'd have loved to have been there. Aww. I'd love, love to have been there. I think it was um, James and Ollie Phelps. Uh, I think it was them. I think it was them guys who did it, and they were all they were all having dinner. And I heard this through the grapevine. Uh, they were all having dinner in the canteen together, and um, I don't know if it's the vinegar or it's the salt or the pepper. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> is it like a, a you know when you loosen the tops of the right, oh yeah, right, right. salt and pepper. Yeah. 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 And apparently they did that to Alan Rickman. Oh no. <laughs> he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would take something like that like lightly. No, right. <laughs> I don't think so either. No, no, plus plus the fact he kind of stayed in character the whole time. Oh, oh well. right. And he's pretty. So Snape was pretty evil. Yeah. You're basically playing a trick on Snape yeah. you're not playing a trick right. on Alan Rickman right? yeah. um, gosh there's so many questions I have uh, I guess the one that always resonated me when I was a kid I always wanted to be in that world so um, what was it like with those sets like in, in Hogwarts itself or you know like the Forbidden Forest and all those creatures and stuff do you have like a favorite set that you worked in like the most or um, I like the Slytherin Common Room which they oh, built yeah. like solely for the Polyjuice Potion scene that was awesome right, set. Yeah. Um, and and I like the Chamber of Secrets that was like mind oh, boggingly wow. big oh, so cool. the Chamber of Secrets and I remember I remember when I went to the Chamber of Secrets um, the, the big sort of face statue of uh, yeah. was it Salazar, Salazar Slytherin yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, as, as you got closer he's like, like the size the scale of the thing <laughs> you're like whoa yeah. and then as you get closer I was like Touched it, I touched it, and then my <coughs> finger went into it. It was made out of like uh, polystyrene, which oh. was really <laughs> like polystyrene, right? Whoops. Really? Uh, Whoops, did you poke a hole in it? <laughs> just like no, I have to go bit, back and watch it. See if it's there. <laughs> <But> I remember <laughs> being fascinated that they had, they had crafted and created and shaped and molded and painted this this styrofoam. Yeah. Into which, which like you could you couldn't tell until he was about a foot away that it was not that was not like. Yeah. Concrete. I had no idea. I thought it was like stone. That whole scene is like, yeah, wow. Oh my gosh. Was huge, <laughs> it was huge, the set. And uh, even the, the, I remember the first time I saw the Great Hall. Oh. Incredible. Wow. Um, yeah, so many good ones. And I remember when we was filming um, at Leavesden, then uh, somebody would be like, oh, they built the new set. Like, uh, like and, you know, whenever they built a new set, everyone would like try and go. Because sometimes you could get on the new sets and <laughs> right. you could see them. Sometimes they'd lock them off. So uh, the right, yeah. So you have padlocks on doors and stuff. Really? Oh, my gosh. Um, so if you was lucky, I remember seeing Diagon Alley for the first time. Like, the first couple of times we tried to see it, it was, it was chained up and locked up. <laughs> yeah. It's so oh. funny. They knew they were working with a bunch would, of kids. Yeah, they I would just, like, stay there. I'd be like, <laughs> pull out their cell phone and start... start Taking, taking pictures. pictures and putting it on social media. <laughs> it was so much fun. It was really exciting. You probably had flip pumps back then too, right? It was like on a, like yeah, a horrible picture <laughs> quality or something. I mean, as a, as a film fan, not as someone who actually was in the films, do you have a favorite uh, movie in the entire in the entire series? Uh, I like... Uh, my favorite book was The Prisoner of Azkaban. I'd say it's my favorite movie too. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Alfonso Cuaron as well, so... Sounds like Kyra agrees with you oh, over there. Prisoner of Azkaban <laughs> is well, what I the liked best. About it, it's like, <laughs> when the first two, like Chris Columbus, amazing, awesome, but like his, his, his in terms of just like costume and hair and makeup, every it all, it all seemed quite glossy. Yeah, like glossy in a way like, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. and I remember them. They'd be like, you had to have your top button done up. Your, right. your tie could had to be straight. And yeah, not a hair out of place. Whereas that kind of went out the window in the third one. And right. Alfonso, I think it was Alfonso Cuarón's decision. I might, I might be wrong, but um, he wanted him to, the kids to look a bit more realistic. You yeah. Know, like, like, yeah, you can like, have a disheveled right. tie. Right, like, like, like messy and stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some with jumpers, some without jumpers. And like, it's just a bit more believable. And like, I can't appreciate, yeah. I pre- appreciate realism in film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you appreciate realism in a film about a, 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 wizard. wi- a wizarding world. Oh, it yeah. felt real. It felt real to me. <laughs> um, well, speaking of the movie, um, Prisoner of Azkaban, did you have any time uh, spent with uh, Gary, Oldman Gary Oldman at all? I didn't at all. No. No. Anybody take the tops off their salt shakers that, that, that you know of? <laughs> I can't imagine doing that to Gary Oldman. I'd be like, he'd probably laugh. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, get, he'd get the joke. Dude, right. a legend. Well, for oh, the people yeah. who are sitting here watching, uh, obviously you got some fans sitting here watching our show right now. Can you share with us just one 
uh, sort of memory, one one moment while you were filming that just sort of stands out in your head of just just something that you're never going to forget. Uh, working on the films, maybe it's just uh, with cast member. One of the most sort of memorable experiences wasn't actually well. There were there were there were some there were a lot filming none that I can remember right now. But uh, when um, was that the premiere, mm-hmm. like that just blew my mind. I'd never been to a movie <laughs> premiere before, and to go to one a Harry Potter movie premiere where they lock off the whole of Leicester Square. And wow! Like from like blocks and streets away like there's just thousands and thousands of fans um, it was mind blowing like and we got out of the car and there's fans screaming my name and the film hadn't even come out <laughs> what the hell how do you know who my are you people right yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's just like crazy um, and it was almost like a realisation at that point was, we knew it was Warner Brothers we knew it was a big movie and you know we knew the budget and stuff but like it was, that was a real Eye-opener. Yeah. 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 That was a real yeah. moment. You know, I was like, wow. Like, what? <laughs> what? Jesus. Well, that's incredible, man. I'm looking out, and I'm seeing the line of people waiting to come talk to you right now. So I just want to thank you. Uh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Um, I just want to thank you for taking the time here once again to be on the Chuck Little Comic Show. Talk to us. Share with us some of the stories. Um, uh, of your life yeah. and the history of, of Harry Potter, man. Really appreciate it. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Ace Comic Con. Sorry the um, weather's so cold. Sorry it's been so up and down <laughs> weather-wise and, and temperature-wise, but uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for being here. Really appreciate it. Yes. No, it's, a, it's a pleasure coming. Thanks for having me. Thank All right, guys. You so much. Uh, for more continuing coverage of Ace Comic Con, keep it right here on Chuck Loda Comics on YouTube, and we will see you guys around the con floor. Have a fantastic weekend. <laughs> Great, man. No worries. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. So nice meeting you.